Let us look at equations of the form z to the power of n equals a, where a is an element of the set of complex numbers. From de Moivre's theorem, we've seen that r cis theta to the power of n is r to the n times cis n of n times theta, okay, is z to the power of n, okay. So what we want to do now is <clears throat> we're going to have a look at we're going to solve the comp the equation z to the power of 5 is square root 3 plus i. Okay, so um, we could start by letting z equal square root 3 plus i. So mod z is r is the square root of 3 squared plus 1 added together and then the square root of that is that gives us the square root of 4, which is 2. Theta is inverse tan 1 on root 3. So we're turning this into cis theta form. We're turning uh, root 3 plus i into cis theta form. Okay. And so the, um, the argument, the general argument, not just the principal argument, the principal argument is inverse tan 1 on root 3, but the general argument is inverse tan 1 on root 3 plus 2k pi all right, for every revolution. Inverse tan 1 on root 3 is pi on 6 plus 2k pi. Okay, so let's say z is square root 3 plus i. This is just one way of solving this. It gives us 2 cis pi on 6 plus 2k pi. Um, this, notice I've used capital Z here, not the lowercase. The actual question itself is lowercase z to the power of 5 is square root 3 plus i. And what we're going to do is let capital Z equals square root 3 plus i. Okay, so capital Z is root 3 plus i, and in polar form, or cis theta form, or modulus argument form is 2 cis pi on 6 plus 2k pi, okay? And we're saying that the original question was that z to the power of 5 is square root 3 plus i. <clears throat> now square root 3 plus i we've just turned into polar form, 2 cis pi on 6 plus 2k pi. And on the right here, z to the power of 5 is r to the power of 5 cis 5 theta from De Moivre's theorem, and that's from this part here, okay? So we've equated these two now, okay, z to the power of 5 and 2 cis pi on 6 plus 2k pi. All right, well, let's start equating things then. So let's look at the modulus. The, the, the radial value here, r to the power of 5 is 2, so r to the power of 5 is 2, so r is 2 to the power of 1 fifth. It's the fifth root of 2, okay, that, that part solved. 5 theta here. 5 times theta must be equal to this pi on 6 plus 2k pi. And what we're going to do here is 5 theta is pi on 6 plus 2k pi. Theta is, just divide through by 5, pi plus 12k pi on 30. All right, 5, 6 is a 30, common denominator, times in that by 5. Uh, sorry, common denominator is 6 here. Make that 12 over 6. Um, we could... Write that as here, pi plus 12k pi on 6, pi over 6, and 12 over 6 is 2, so sorts that one out. Um, okay, so theta is pi plus 12k pi over 30, k equals 0, 1, 2, 3 to 4. Notice there's 5 of them because it's the pair of 5. Okay, solutions of the form, so the solutions then of the form z equals 2 to the power of 1 fifth, cis pi plus 12k pi on 30, where k is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, generating five solutions. Now, you notice about this, <clears throat> all five solutions, there's five of them, all five solutions have the same modulus value. The modulus, the radius value, to the power of fifth. So all these solutions appear to lie on the circle. All right, notice that they all have the same. If we were to plot them on the Argan diagram, they're all going to be the same distance from the origin. So you have a circular, you have a circle, sorry, in the Argan diagram. Here's another way of setting out your working out and solving it. What we could do is z to the power of 5 is square root 3 plus i. So square root 3 plus i is, as we found earlier, 2 cis pi plus 12k pi on 6. Okay, over here we set z to the power of 5 is 2 cis 
all that again. Uh, apply Demovis Serum to both sides, so Z to the power of 5 to the power of 1 fifth will just give us Z. And over here, 2 cis pi plus 12k pi, we'll have a 6 here, bit in parentheses, to the power of 1 fifth. Well, we know from Demovis Serum, that's just going to be 1 fifth times the angle. So we're going to have Z equals 2 to the power of 1 fifth. Cis, 1 on 5 times this line here to give us pi plus 12k pi over 30. K is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. All right. <clears throat> now, let's write them out individually. Now they're in this form, so k equals 0. Z is 2 to the power of 5th. Cis, pi on 30, because k is 0. K is 1, 2 to the power of 5th. Cis, 13 pi on 30. K is 2. Z is 2 to the 5th. Cis, 25 pi on 30. K is 3. Is this one, so on, and so on. K, 4. Okay. And notice the radius is the same for each. All these points lie on a circle. And that's going to be a feature of this type of um, equation. Z to the power of n equals a, where a is complex. Uh, the solutions will lie on circles. Okay, they will lie distributed around a circle. All right, well, let's have a look. Let's have a look at an example here, another question. Let's say all the solutions, so here's a question. And in this question, all the solutions of the equation z to the n equals a, where a belong is an element of a set of complex numbers, n is an element of the natural numbers, the counting numbers, all right, uh, are represented by a subset of the points shown in the given diagram. Okay, so here we are. Here are all these points evenly spaced around the circle. Now, not all of these are solutions, only some of them. Now, all points are evenly spaced around a circle with center O and radius 2 units. Two units, all right. If B and D represent complex solution, uh, complex numbers which are solutions of the equation, but C is not a solution, okay. Find the values of n and a, okay. So we've got, um, oh, wrong one. Get rid of that. Do it again. So we've got z to the power of n is a, and we want to find n, and we want to find a. All right, and we're told that B and D, B and D are solutions, okay? So we want to find N and A as a result, okay? Now, as we've seen so far, all complex solutions are equally spaced around the circle for equations of the type Z to the N is A. All right, um, now the angle between each point is pi on six because if we're gonna spread them evenly around, we're going 30, 60, 90, all right, pi on 6, 2 pi on 6, 3 pi on 6 to give us pi on 2. All right, so the angle between them, okay, between the points D and B, pi on 2 minus pi on 6, because B is at 30 degrees, pi on 6. So we get 2 pi on 6, pi on 3, okay? So 60 degrees apart. So that means the solutions are going to be B, D, we're going to be F, all right? Keep going around. So we're just going around every two dots. We've got H. Okay, and we've got J down the bottom there, and then L, finally. All right. Okay, so that means there are, if you count them up, as you can see by the red arrows, six of them. Six solutions, N is six. And we can just start counting. All right, so let's just take, say, pick one of them, Z1. Let's just pick the first one, B, all right? Radius two, R is two, cis pi on six in cis theta form, pi on six as our first solution, um, and we're going to have, um, raise that to the power of 6, we're going to have 2 to the power of 6, and cis, now all this business here, power of 6, means that we're going to have 6 times pi on 6, which is just going to be pi. So we're going to have 2 to the power of 6 is 64, cis pi. Okay, well that's nice. 64 times cos pi in Cartesian or rectangular form, plus 64 times sine pi times i, Okay, well, sine of pi is zero straight away, so that bit's going to drop out. So we're left with 64 times cos pi, okay? Now, cos pi is minus 1, so we've got 64 times minus 1, which gives us minus 64. So A is minus 64, okay? So, all right, um, we found N to be 6, and we found A to be minus 64. Lovely. Okay, let's, let's have a look at another example. We're going to let P of Z be this polynomial here. It's going to be Z cubed 
plus AZ squared plus BZ minus 13. Now, a, and we get told that A and B are real numbers. Okay, uh, in front of Z2, that's just clearly the number one, so that's real as well. Okay, so the coefficients of this polynomial are real. And we're told that given that P of minus three plus two I is equal to zero, so that's a solution uh, of the polynomial. Okay, and we want to find all of the solutions of the equation P of Z equals zero. Well, straight away, the conjugate factor theorem comes into play here because these are real coefficients. And so if you have one solution, let's say Z1 is minus three plus two I, if that's one solution, okay, then by the uh, conjugate complex conjugate factor theorem, Z2 is the complex is the conjugate sorry complex conjugate of Z1, so it's minus three minus two I is also a solution, okay. Um, and I'm just saying here that A and B, these are real numbers, but so is um, the coefficient in front of Z. So they're all real numbers. So the conjugate uh, factor theorem applies here. So there's two solutions for our cubic. We only need one more. Okay, well, what we could do is why don't we re write these as factors? So Z1 plus 3 minus 2i times um, Z2 plus 3 plus 2i. Okay, and we expand all that out, which I haven't done the algebra here, but when you do that, you're going to get Z squared plus 6Z plus 13. Okay, that's the quadratic that results from that. Now, P of Z is a cubic equation, so we need one more linear factor. And that means P of Z, and here written again, Z cubed plus A Z squared plus B Z minus 13, is some Z minus alpha, some factor alpha, times our um, quadratic we just found, Z squared plus 6X plus, uh, 6 Z sorry, plus 13. Okay. All right. Well, next thing we could do then is, um, why don't we just expand that out? So P of Z is Z cubed plus 6 Z squared plus 13 Z minus alpha z squared, minus six alpha z, minus 13 alpha, and we can write that now as z cubed, six minus alpha times z squared, plus 13 minus six alpha times z, minus 13 alpha. And what we're gonna do is, having done that now, this thing here must be the same as the original one we're given in the question there. We just need to find this missing variable alpha. Well, straight away, if we can, um, so I'll write this out again, just here it is. Here's our original question here. All right. And um, we know that we can write this A and this B in terms of this, in terms of the alpha that we've been looking for. Okay, well, just have a look on the very end here. If you just look here, that minus 13 alpha must match up with minus 13. All right, so minus 13 alpha equals minus 13. Well, straight away, that's going to tell us what alpha is. Alpha's got to be one, plus one at that. But also notice here, six minus alpha is equal to A. There. And 13 minus six alpha is B. All right. All right, well, let's just see then. All right, well, if we do that, we've now got alpha is one, then a is 6 minus alpha, so A is 6 minus 1 is 5. And 13 minus 6 alpha, well, 13 minus 6 times 1, okay, 13 minus 6 is 7, so B is 7. So that's really handy. So we've got our alpha, and we've got A and B. So A is 5, B is 7, alpha is 1. And so the other solution is, if alpha is 1, then the other solution is Z equals 1, Z equals alpha. All right? Because remember, we had to find that whole factor Z minus alpha, all right? And since alpha is one, that's just Z minus one, which then implies that Z equals one is a solution. All right, and that's it.